they travel, the Taranauts travel to a different world, this time once again, to a world called Scintilla. Uh, and uh, again, they have to solve the four riddles that uh, Sharpazur has hidden for them on this world. And uh, the only thing is that this time they're traveling to a world where the uh, people of the world, the Mithyakos of that world, are quite dour and uh, depressed. So they're not like the happy, helpful people of the other worlds. A great tragedy has befallen them a couple of octons ago and they're not happy people anymore. So they have to deal with those kind of mythicos this time. Well, I never thought I would write fantasy actually to begin with. But uh, I wanted to write an Indian story set in an Indian setting. I think most Indian authors would like that, you know. We have all grown up reading uh, books set in other cultures, other countries. And we now think it's time that uh, our children read stories set in their own ethos and their own kind of uh, world. However, at the same time, what's happened is the world has come to India. So our children are no longer Indian children. They are citizens of the world with the kind of exposure they get through television and movies and the internet. So there was a tricky issue here. The only way I discovered that we could bring these two together was to set it in an entirely different universe. But cunningly use a lot of Indian words and Indian situations and Indian uh, you know, references in it which perhaps children would not get, but their parents, if they happened to flip through the books, would get. Uh, and that's how this idea for a completely uh, fantasy novel came into being. One thing I thought about was, when I was thinking of this world of Mithya, that it would not be a base 10 world, like our world is. So it's not 10, 100,000 kind of thing. Everything was on the number 8, because it originally started with the 8 directions. So, you know, the four cardinal directions and the four directions in between. So something based on that was my thinking. So then eight worlds, 32 stars in the super sun, Tara, uh, 48 dings in a Tara day. So there are no hours and minutes, there are dings and dinglings on Mithya. So things that it became a base eight world. And then, of course, it followed them that there would have to be eight books in the series. So that's how it came about. I think w how these characters came out was... Uh, uh, bringing, uh, coming together of all the ch children characters that I've seen in all the movies that I've seen, in all the books that I've read. So sort of three characters which had eccentricities, uh, so that would make them identifiable and unique uh, as characters, but who were regular children in every other sense of the word. Uh, the combination, I wanted more than one child to be the protagonist. I didn't want it to be based on one child. So I uh, thought about it, I said maybe three is a good number, I didn't want to do this four, two girls, two boys kind of thing. So I wanted it to be a little different. Two, two kids was too few, four kids were too many. So I thought of three and then how to divide them up. Should there be two boys and one girl or two girls and one boy? Uh, and I just felt two girls and one boy worked better for whatever reason. Well, they are in much greater danger than ever before this time. They face uh, severe danger this time. Uh, uh, one of the characters actually gets stung and uh, shocks and begins to drown in the lake. This is the kind of thing that hasn't happened before. There was a traitor, uh, which was, uh, you know, the presence of whom was revealed at the end of the third book. And in the fourth book, one of the traitors was unmasked. But at the end of the, at the, end of the fourth book, uh, Shakti, who is the sort of lieutenant to the emperor's Ashunya, realized that there must be somebody else, even higher up. Otherwise, the, the traitor that was revealed in book four could not have worked without the help of someone from Central Command. So, that one is also revealed in book five. Oh, oh there are some really amusing characters actually coming up. In spite of the fact that it's set in a world where the people are very humorless and depressed and, you know, dark uh, in their mood, I'm saying, uh, there are a few funny characters in there. Uh, humorous characters which buck the trend, which, uh, you know, against all odds, against the norm, they try to be different and they are more cheerful and they are the ones that help the Taranauts out. So there is one particular character there, I think, which the kids will like very much and her name is Chapati. So I think uh, they will like her. There is Zwala, uh, Zarpa and Tufan. These are the Taranauts. Zwala is the child of fire. So if you are, think a little out of the box, a little laterally, you will see that Zwala is really Jwala. So there is always a little hidden hint in there. Zarpa is really Sarpa. She is the daughter of the super serpent. And the boy's name is pretty straightforward, Tufan. 
so you can guess what he's about. The main thing I try to make it amusing. Uh, you know, the names always have some amusing connection. And if you get it, you know, you can permit yourself a little chuckle. Ah, okay, I got this. But if you don't get it, it's fine. For instance, even the food they eat in Mithya, there's food like called creposas, which if you think about it are actually crepes plus dosas. So those are creposas and they love something called samchoris, samosas and kachoris. And so a lot of little Indian references in there and I have fun doing that. Uh, I guess I'm one of the lucky ones who always knew what I wanted to do when I grew up uh, and I always wanted to be a writer. So I've been writing, I, don't, I think from the age of eight or so, uh, you know, poems and little stories, accounts of travels, uh, stories, whatever. But uh, maybe at the age of 16 or 17, I got my first published uh, piece in the newspaper. I continued writing. Uh, my parents obviously thought there was no future in writing. At that time, there, was, it wasn't, there wasn't much future in writing. I don't come from a family of writers or artists or anybody in the creative arts. I come from a family of professionals. So I did the typical middle class thing of my time. I, did, I had got a degree in engineering. Uh, that was one thing I was supposed to do before I was allowed to fo follow my dream. So I did that. And the moment I finished my degree in engineering, moved to Delhi and joined Target magazine, which was a children's magazine. Uh, because I think by then I knew I wanted to write for children, not just write, but I want to write for children. And since then, that was my dream job, Target. And luckily I got a job and learned everything I knew. Uh, I mean, learned everything I know now about the nuances of children's writing, then uh, continued to write for children.